Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking at three things you can do when you've got really bad conditions for photography. Okay, so I'm back at Kerbar Edge in the Peak District. I was here a little while ago when I was doing a preview of the D500 when I first got that. And I said I wanted to come back because I really wanted to do a sunset here. So this is the location I really wanted to capture. And the idea was to have this rock pillar, these rocks in the foreground, with all of the landscape behind and a really nice sunset. And when I was on my way here today, the sky was really clear, there was no cloud, it was blue sky, and I thought I was in for a really good sunset. Unfortunately, the clouds have come in since then. We've got horrible wind, it's raining a little bit. So what we're gonna to do today is talk a little bit about what you can do when you get these type of conditions and how you can still come away, hopefully, with some good photos. Okay, the first thing you can do is consider changing your mindset about the shot that you're trying to take. It sounds really obvious, but sometimes you can just get stuck in a mindset of trying to capture something really perfect that you had in your mind before you arrived. Like I said, I wanted to come and get a sunset today. And I had this perfect picture in my mind with the really vibrant orange golden sky. And I'm obviously not gonna get that. So if I just change my mindset a little bit and see what actually is out there, I've got some really dramatic conditions. I'm obviously not gonna get those colors in the sky, but maybe I can capture the mist or the fog or just the wind and the weather. And that could create a really dramatic shot. So just changing your mindset in that way can help you to come away with a better shot than you would have if you were sticking to your original plan. And along with that, try changing your location. So before I was set up on the edge, looking out with the columns of rocks and things, and the columns and stuff like that were really helping to create a composition in the shot. But really the main focus point, or the thing that was gonna add the drama to the shot was gonna be the sunset. So without that, it was quite an average shot. Instead, I've come over here and I might be able to find something really cool and moody in the distance. We've got all this great weather and misty bit of rain over the hills in the distance there. And if I use the 24 to 200 millimeter at the 200 millimeter end, I might be able to get in there nice and close and actually get something which is much more interesting than what I was going to get over there. Particularly considering I'm not going to get the, the light over there. And also by coming here, I haven't got all the terrible wind coming up over the edge. So that helps a little bit. I'm not getting camera shake and it's just a little bit more pleasant. Only a little bit though, <laughs> it's still pretty miserable here. Okay, so the second thing you can try doing is going into black and white for your shot. When you cut out all of the colour, you don't have to worry about whether you've got good light and all those gold and orange colours in golden hour light. And you can just concentrate on things like textures and tone in your image. And you can actually set your camera into monochrome mode as well. So rather than taking your picture and seeing it in colour on the back of your screen, you can actually see it in black and white as you're taking your shot. And that'll help you to think about the tones and textures in your scene rather than the colour in your shot. All right, and the third thing you can do is try and get in close. You might have come for a landscape, you might have wanted that great sky, but when the conditions are just not right, sometimes you just can't get that shot. So try something a little bit different. Try getting in close. You might not have a macro lens with you, doesn't necessarily matter. I'm using the 24 to 70 millimeter here at the 70 millimeter end, and I'm getting in nice and close on this moss, and there's some texture and things on this millstone here, and I'm hoping that's gonna come out quite nicely. It might not be the landscape that you came for originally, 
but it's better than getting nothing and you might come away with a decent shot. So I think I'm going to wrap up now. The weather is really horrible and it's getting quite dark. I think I've got some stuff now that I can maybe work with. I won't know till I get back, but hopefully we've got some shots to work with and we've made the best out of the situation and worked with the weather and conditions that we've got. So I'll see you when I get back home and we'll look at the photos on the computer. So I didn't get the conditions I was expecting. I really wanted that great sunset, but as soon as the cloud was rolling in, I was never going to get it. <laughs> it really was bad conditions up there, probably worse than it actually looks on film. The wind was terrible, it was shaking my camera, even on the tripod. And there was a constant kind of mist, not really rain, but it was like a fine drizzle that was just constant and making all the lenses wet and smear. It was just really difficult to work. I couldn't fly the drone, it was way too windy for that. So, yeah, normally the kind of conditions you try to avoid. But I was actually quite pleased with some of the images I did manage to get. There was some real drama and atmosphere in some of them. And if I hadn't have gone out in those conditions and taken the chance, I would never have got them. So I would definitely recommend, no matter what, just get out. Even if it's a fail, at least you tried. And you're never going to get those shots in those conditions unless you actually go out and try. So let's look at the shots I did get. Okay, so this is the first one that I got, and this is the shot that I had in mind, but with a nice sunset in the background. And I'd already been to this location, like I said, when I did the video about the D500, and I really quite liked this composition, and I knew I wanted to go back there when I had the right conditions, because it would be looking out in exactly the right direction in December to really capture a great sunset just behind this scene. Like I said, I do like the composition, that pillar of rocks on the right is nicely balanced against the boulder on the left. And then you've got all of the landscape that goes out into the distance. I did think about removing the buildings and the cars and things, but in the end I decided against it. I don't think it ruins the image too much. The only problem with doing it in the evening is that the headlights from the cars do shine quite brightly. So I have removed just some of the quite bright headlights because they're quite distracting and stand out. So I didn't get my sunset shot, but I have refined my composition further. I know exactly the location and when I do get that sunset, I will be back and I will get the shot. Okay, so for this next one, I changed location. I knew that I wasn't going to get the sunset and there was no point staying at the edge any longer than I did. I got one shot which came out okay, but I thought it was a good idea to have a look around, see what else I could find. And just by turning around and walking a little bit away from the edge, I found this, and it was fantastically moody. You've got all that mist, and that mist just helped the trees really stand out from the background. And I just really love the atmosphere in this. That's something I'm trying to improve in my photography. Rather than concentrating on all the technical stuff and getting that perfect, I want to try and get mood and atmosphere and maybe some story into my images. And I think this does tell a story. You can see what the conditions are like. It's very dramatic. You've got the wind that's blowing all the grass around. Again, it's not a perfect image because my shutter speed could have been higher. Although increasing my shutter speed would have meant that I would need, I would have needed a much higher ISO that would have introduced more noise into the image. But I, I like the movement, I like how you can see the grass is moving around, you've got that almost blurry ICM type look to it. It gives a little bit more drama and just a more dynamic feel to the image. So yeah, I think definitely changing location was a great idea. And if I had been there, if I had got my sunset, I obviously wouldn't have got this shot, so it was a really good move to turn around and capture that. Here's my black and white one. Again, this was 
captured in a similar location. I put the camera into monochrome mode so that I could see exactly how the image was going to come out after I'd edited it in black and white. And it's quite a simple shot in a lot of ways. I wanted to concentrate on the textures. So you've got the, all the grasses there, you've got some nice texture in the sky and also the tone. So I worked on the adjusting the, the tones in the colour ranges that would have been there if it was a colour image uh, until I got something quite nice. So in the grasses we've got some nice light areas and some darker areas just to contrast against each other and create a bit more texture. And there's not a lot going on in this image. I like the leading line from the path. But compositionally, there's not a lot there, but I do like the, the emptiness and barrenness. It gives a feeling to the image. Again, it's about atmosphere and feeling. And that, for me, is what creates this image. It's, it's the, the tone and the vibe. And if we put that into colour, I don't think that works half as well. There's just not as much drama. So going black and white can definitely help improve your images in certain situations and if you've got bad conditions in particular it can help there. So this one was perhaps the biggest surprise of all. I didn't expect to get all the detail and the colours in this because to the naked eye you couldn't really see all that. This was quite small and it didn't really stand out like this. So it's almost like finding a new microscopic world that you wouldn't have noticed otherwise. And if I hadn't have had the conditions that I had, I would have been clicking away and capturing my sunset and I would never have thought to focus in on this little scene. So it's great just to change your perspective and try and look for something new and you can find something really interesting in, in the most mundane places. And anybody who has seen my macro videos will know that I love using my macro lenses and I would always choose to use a macro lens for close-up stuff when possible. But in this particular situation, I'm really pleased with the results that I got just with my 24 to 70 mm I was zoomed in almost to the 70 mm end, I think 69 mm And I have cropped in on this. If we look at the original, you can see it is quite a heavy crop. But the 45 megapixels on the Z7 handles that well and there's still a lot of detail there. So overall, fairly pleased, but I do still need to go back and get that sunset. I will get it one day. That's about it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching everyone. Next week is gonna be my last video of the year, so I hope you'll tune in for that one. It's gonna be a bit of fun, a bit of Christmas stuff going on, and there'll be some bloopers as well. If you're not already subscribed and you'd like to do so, then you can click down here on the big red button or over here on my face, and that way you'll keep up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week, and there's a new video every Sunday morning, 10 a.m. UK time. So, like I said, I hope you'll join me next week for the last one of the year. But until then, everyone, thanks a lot, and bye for now.